Welcome to Sailing Sertia. I'm Tegan. My parents sold our house, sold their business, and bought a 38-foot island spirit catamaran with the goal to travel the world. Only problem is, it needed a complete refit. After three years, we are finally ready to set sail. This is Colbin, my husband. Karen, my mum. Denver, my brother. And Robin, my dad. Together we make up Sailing Sertia. In last week's episode, we left Brazil and went through some pretty squally times. Five, we also crossed the equator four, and went three, from polywogs to shellbacks. Two, one. Hooray! <laughs> we went from one extreme to the next. With one week full of squalls, the next week dead doldrums. This is what we've got after a night of craziness, storms, squalls, lots of praying. We had to detour around, away from our course to try and get around the big storm system that we had. So now we're so far off course and this is the conditions we've got to try and get back to our course again. Bit of a nightmare. and there's just nothing going on so we decided to come down and check on the props and there's quite a bit of barnacle growth from the carbonello so it's coming off quite easily it's just very tiring when you've had months of no exercise so but it is coming off quite nice and easily but we're making the most of the doldrums Yeah. All the little bait fish balls have gone since we came in here. Yeah. On the first day of doldrums, we thought to ourselves, let's get off of this boat, go for a swim, clean the hulls. It was still very daunting knowing that there was 3,000 meters between us and the bottom of the ocean. Colbin, my mom and Denver got into the water earlier and cleaned the hull of the boat. That's how desperate we are for some speed. So the hull's all clean and we went for a swim and we can't believe it's only lunchtime. It feels like it should be seven o'clock at night. We've literally just done nothing. And look at those conditions. We went from one extreme to the other. We had this little fish following us around the boat all day and when we got in the water we got such an awesome photo of him. On day two in the doldrums we had some mahi mahi come up from behind and stick with us for about two days. Colbin tried everything to catch one but he claims that because we were going so slowly they weren't wanting to take his bait.
trying so hard to catch one. They stuck with us all day and all night for about four days. At night time, they would shoot around the boat, leaving bioluminescence in their wake. So it was really cool to see them. Very hard to video at night, but this is the footage we could get. Colbin eventually gave up on his lures, skirts and spoons and traded them for a little live bait. He caught one that was following us under the boat. Unfortunately, we had become quite fond of those little fellas, but he did it behind our back. Attached it to a hook and sent it out the back of the boat. And that's when we caught our first mahi-mahi in about three days. These were our baitfish friends that stuck with us for hundreds of nautical miles on our journey up the coast of Brazil. We became quite fond of checking on them every morning and evening and they were always there. It's not on. So but I'll, I'll, stick, the, I'll stick with my, two, my healthy two minute noodles whilst he drinks his Rick Eight, coffee coffee. Hundred cup of coffee. That's it's rather nice. And he's trying to captain this ship. <laughs> trying to find some wind over here. They're just blowing. Blow some air there. We've got nothing. Absolutely nothing. Got 2.7 knots of wind right now. Down to 1.8. the hook it came off and there was nothing on the hook and i was reeling the hook through the water and it charged it was the last day yeah. no it's a live bait no i caught a live bait earlier and i was just trawling a live bait a dead bait okay the... under the sugar scoop okay. Maybe 
need no, a no, third no, no, order. No, no, no. <laughs> we, really, we really are very spoiled. <laughs> You guys are tired of their order. We've got the skipjack tuna marinating in soy sauce and ginger and herbs and then we'll fry it up and I'm going to make a nice cold pasta. Our Italian friend Barbara told us about a very simple pasta that she used to make. It just consists of garlic, olive oil, I put a few herbs in, salt and pepper and it really is the most delicious pasta we've eaten in a very long time. So we paired that with some seared tuna and some toasted sesame seeds with a little bit of sushi mayo and my oh my, it was an amazing meal. Oh, there is a little tiny fish on me. It's like a bunny. It's tiny. Hey, this is a thing of a nice bait. Put them back. Take them, you need to put them back. Okay. Not a yellow pin. Yeah. That's just like my one. Mm. 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 Okay, okay. How do we get him off here without hurting him? Uh, so what you want to do is not to squeeze him very tight. Okay, well, maybe you should do it in house here. Yeah. This could be our yellow. <laughs> you reckon this is finally the yellow pin? After a very long night of trying to slow down so we could get to Al de Salou, 
in the daytime it's finally morning and the sun is coming up so we are headed towards Ireland we have eight nautical miles to go and we're doing about three knots so should take us about two to three hours thank you for watching if you enjoyed our video please give it a like and if you haven't already please subscribe